and how much does the council got to make out of it? Do they have a financial interest in this? Council own the, the land. Okay. Now, as it stands, and not in any way trying to avoid the question, it's not for me to say that that would be Will's decision. And I need to make the point here again the Fire and Rescue Authority is beholden to Will in these circumstances. Will own the land. Now, what we would appreciate that Will own the land. But you're going to have to pay World Council for that land. Right. Right. There, right. 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 there are a number of options. There are a number of options potentially that could result from this proposal in terms of the land. One would be that we'll retain ownership of the land and lease the land to the Fire and Rescue Authority. Which would be my view around that, that would be a, a peppercorn rent. So, which is normally around the pound a year. Bearing in mind that for Will, the proposal assumes a library and a children's centre, which the Fire and Rescue Authority might build and take the whole cost for, in which case the cost would be in excess of three million pounds, which would be the cost of the fire station only. And in those circumstances, we may be given the land and we may charge rent to Will to retain their their place in the, in the that's one option. I'm not saying what it would be, it's not within my gift to decide that. The other alternative is is that Will make a capital contribution to the cost of the library and the children's centre, and then we would just pay rent in the same way as I've described previously. The fact is until such time as that is presented to Will to make the decision on, it's not. I can't answer that. Nor in two can the fire rescue authority. Okay. Would you like to come up? Thank you. I don't know how many people have actually studied the meeting of the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority on the second of October, twenty fourteen. The report number CFO stroke 101 stroke 14, which says, item 26, alternative to merger if strong public opposition to the proposal. However, if the specific consultation on the merger was strongly opposed by the local community, the alternative option to deliver the required savings to ensure a balanced budget would then be outright closure of West Kirby Fire Station while maintaining the station as upfront. Yeah. 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 Let me respond to that, please. That is absolutely correct. I wrote that before and I made that clear. What the Fire and Rescue Authority, of course, would need to consider is their statutory duties. And in agreeing to that, then they would be knowingly incurring a delay in response to West Kirby that could be avoided if they went with the merger option. Ultimately, that is a matter for the Fire and Rescue Authority, as I've made clear on a number of occasions. The point is, I am the one who's held it to account for the recommendations. If the authority elect to close West Kirby outright and remain in Upton against my recommendation, then they can't hold me to account for anything that may happen thereafter. Can I just make a point? They can't hear you in the other room. It's not well, can fair. I can there are hundreds of people out there as well. No, 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 no. no. You told me twice already. And I came away having listened to you to get the further information. Just be polite, please. You need to be polite to other people. And you spoke at both of them. Let other people speak now. I mentioned about the finances. I contacted Cheshire County Fire Brigade about what they're doing with you. I, I've also looked at reports that you, the Fire Authority, have submitted to the about response time, about response times, which are crucial to your operational requirement. As I said, I took the trouble to go to two meetings, and now I'm being denied an opportunity to respond. No, because of yeah. Yes, okay, fine. Right. Yeah. I've listened to you like everybody else. And
quite frankly, I, you know, I'm wondering why you're here. Because you're not telling us that we can make a case. You're just simply saying, listen to your case. And why haven't you said this? Why didn't you say that you applied for planning permission to build a tower in Greasley in January 2013? I just like Kevin is the deputy chief executive. Do you want to confirm me? Okay, just I'll, step up. Yeah. I'll read it. Uh, just to confirm, the fire authority has never applied for planning permission in Greece at all. Yes, or you're quite right. I'll read it to you. This is the planning permission. Um, the fire from the fire brigade. The location is up to a community fire station, Arrow Park Road Upton. Proposal, demolition of existing training tower and construction of steel training tower in a revised location. If it can save you reading out the, the whole uh, article there. That was to do with it. for Upton Fire Station. Revised location. Not for us. You're not going to build a spot. You're not applying that to build something okay. that's already there. Right. Now, like, let me let me be very clear. The tower, the, the brick tower at Upton was condemned. It was demolished and it was replaced by the steel tower. That is what that re re relates to. No, it is. I'm telling you, that's what it is. Drive down to Upton now and go and look at the steel tower that has replaced the brick tower. Okay. That relates to Upton. Okay. I, just, uh, I just want to say something else. Just when, I, when, I was a, when I was a... Just when before I was you do, can it sit? please do not come up and make comments which you know not to be true. I'm reading really from the planning No, and you said that we'd applied for planning permission in Greasby. That clearly relates to Upton. That's the implication. No, it's not. No, said, it is not. From what I heard you say, not now, that's game. the implication. You said you, you totally support the move into Greasley Village. You said that all the way through, with a little bit of fringe on the side. When I was a child living in Manchester, I was going to school in the city centre, and they built a fire station in the city centre. But one lunchtime, when I'm walking down the road, I see a fire engine come out, run over a man, and squash him. He's dead. And now you want to talk about putting a fire station in the middle of a village. I'm sorry, there are a lot of more people, but let me say this to you. There will be a judicial review if the application goes ahead, and I will be funding it properly. And that judicial review will be a better time. Can I just say that at the last meeting, we we formed a queue and people just came and made a queue and that was very evident that people wanted to speak and then you were all very ready to speak. If you haven't spoken before, would you like to come out? Sorry, I'm not very comfortable coming out front to speak to this nice big chap here. I'm just a relatively in Holy Lake. One, I really don't want to lose the library in Greece. I said, boy, my God, I think it's absolutely disgraceful for kids in the day. That's a huge facility of library. And um, we've got a little tiny bit of green, the trees, a little bit of TV centre of the village. Why would we want emergency vehicles coming out into the middle of the village? Um, also, my question was the one we the value of West Kirby and Upton, which should be in the public domain, it should be transparent and it isn't. So my voice is going to be very nervous and better at happening from the edge. As if, uh, as if Sarah, you need to yeah. take that up with the clerk to the authority because their advice is that that should not be made public. Yeah. That's very, very important because that's why West Kirby is getting knocked down cheaper to build it in Greece, it's better land development in West Kirby, it's money and power. Uh, Dan, just a, a couple of questions from this. Uh, one suggesting there's an RAF site which is Brownfield, and uh, have we considered that in Greece? I'm assuming that's the Pump Lane site. Yeah. 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 
As I've said previously, we will have made it clear that all the land in the vicinity of that area was in the green box. And another from outside, a doctor heard, uh, finds your comments very offensive, and you do not need to say that he doesn't have to keep the people in green to be happy. That's, that's fine, but it doesn't make it any less true what I'm required to do. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, hi, Dan. Um, did I hear you right? Did you say that if we do go to Green Greensby Community Centre, take that away, put a fire station in, does the government intend to do that? What the government has done, under the Transformation and Efficiencies Fund, we are required, and we were required, to bid for capital funding. Previously, we were allocated capital as a matter of course, in addition to our revenue funding. What has happened over the last couple of years is we've been required to bid into a effectively a, as I said, a transformation and efficiencies fund and the government has set criteria all of which is that we ought to we need to work with other agencies emergency services local authority and so forth on the basis of the bid that we have submitted around interoperability the mergers so clearly delivering efficiencies and increasing the number of the retaining firefighters we've had, we've been awarded the full amount of money for that bid, based against the government's criteria. Can you congratulate you on that? Uh, obviously that was a clear bid, but please do not come into a meeting justifying response times as the major reason that you have made this decision when it really is a budget that you've been able to obtain to make these decisions. It's, it's not that. Let me be clear. Let, let, let me be absolutely clear. What we're talking about here is, is capital spending, so the one-off spend to build the new fire station. I made it clear from the outset that I wouldn't recommend any station closures if we had another alternative. The fact of the matter is we don't because of the scale of the financial challenge that we've faced over the last decade and made it clear it didn't just start in 2010. The fact is we need to make the revenue savings. We only do that by reducing firefighter numbers. Therefore we have to make structural changes, i.e. we have to reduce the number of fire engines and therefore fire stations. The other reason we need to reduce fire stations is because that then allows us to deliver further savings from what we term support functions. So for example, if we only have 22 fire engine, uh, fire stations instead of 26, we can reduce our ICT costs, we reduce our maintenance costs. Not huge amounts, but they all make a contribution. Let me assure you, this is, this is financially driven in the sense of revenue, not capital. But ultimately what I'm trying to do you must recognise this, clearly the majority of people do recognise, what I am trying to do is to deliver the least worst outcome. That is what I am trying to do in the operational response sense across all of Merseyside. But the truth be told, you started this steam train, now I, yeah, sorry, the truth be told, you started this steam train, it, it, there's now no turning back in, the decisions are made, yeah, yeah the, the decision. You well, let's be honest. Honest. If, if, if this was a true consultation, we would have representatives from Willowbrook Council here. Yeah. 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 We, we would have a, a proper consultation. Where you know that you've had conversations with with the council behind closed doors to secure the funding. And I, I, I honestly say, just remember where you are. You're in the House of Lords here, and, and I urge you. To, to please be honest with the people of, of Greensby, Hoylake, West Kirby, who come here today, and, and you know what? I have to make decisions on, on branch closures. I, I, I really do. I understand how difficult it is for you. However, we all pay council tax. I work for a bank. When, when I make those decisions, people have a choice. Let me know my bank's work. We don't have a choice. We have to trust you to go and do the right thing for these people. Let me, let me be clear. In the operational response, I think just, just, 
Does anyone think we can get into the argument here? That, and, and clearly people do. The majority of people I've spoken to, gentlemen previously made the comment to say, we recognise why you would want to merge the two stations. People have said that, did they? And clearly it's financial because we've got to make savings. But my primary concern here, and that which I'm held to account for, is around the operational response outcomes. <coughs> the easiest thing in the world for me would be to stand up here and just to say, I shut up them. I sort of shut my scare a much easier thing to do. But I would be knowingly then incurring at least a two, two and a half minute increase in response times to West Kirby. That is the reality. That's the reality. What about Upton people? You're going to respond. And I've made, I also made the point that the time, whatever happens, the times on Upton's area, they're going to increase. But Greasby is still on the Upton station area. And I can demonstrate that ad nauseum through the data sets that we can produce and the maps that we can produce because it is the reality and, and nothing is going to change that. Thank you too far off. So can I just go back to your report on the 2nd of October when you said the alternative emerges, this is paragraph 26, you say However, if the specific consultation on the merger was strongly opposed by the local community, can I ask you, when you wrote this report, what your definition was of strong opposition? How much more do you think we need to do? Have I, have I, have I, or have I not said I will faithfully represent the views of the people of Greasby on a number of occasions? Thank you. Like, have I said that? Thank you. You're not listening. Right. That's not right. This is the right. report that you produced for the fire authority, and you have put a, three paragraphs in it that say, I will do another option. There is another option if there's strong opposition. Now, you must, when you wrote the report, have a view in your mind, because, I mean, the authority must have questioned you on it. What do you mean by that? Are you intending holding a referendum? <laughs> of the residents of Greasby to ascertain whether you've got strong opposition or not. The, the, we're, we're, we've got a server, right? We have a server, which, and the outcomes of that server, which is the opportunity, which we're giving it out to everyone and give everyone the opportunity to fill out the server. We've advertised it widely online and we've even said that people don't have access to the internet. If they write in, then we'll send it out. And what we'll do is faithfully report back the views of the people of Greensby, Upton, West Kirby and anyone else who fills out the survey. I made that point clear. Made that point clear ad nauseum. Made that point clear ad nauseum. But what I've also said is the Fire and Rescue Authority are required to consider the operational response implications because their statutory duties are the Fire and Rescue Services Act. Now the authority can, the authority can, because it is they who make the decision, not me, as I've said, ad nauseum, they can elect in the face of public opposition in Greensby to elect to say we won't proceed with the merger option. Instead, we will close West Kirby. The authority can do that, and I've made that option clear as you can see. So they can do that. I don't make the decision. The Fire and Rescue Authority do. But you come into your report, if you, and if I read it correctly, if there was strong opposition, you would then go down the route of the other option, which is actually to actually maintain the station up to the close West Kirby. Now, that was what the re that's what your report said to the Fire Authority. All I'm asking you is, all I'm asking you is, what did you have in your mind when you wrote these paragraphs that said this is strong opposition compared with say weak opposition what 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 was it well it isn't for me to ultimately it is a matter for the fire and rescue authority to take a view on that it's not i don't make the decision i don't know how many times i can make the point i am an officer right i make the recommendations based on my professional judgment which by the way there are 
By the way, there are lots of fire and fire chief fire officers around the country who are also recommending mergers. Lots of authorities are having to consider these sorts of these sorts of issues. In the end, it's a matter for the authority to make the decision, okay, not me. Final, final point only. When you presented the report, did the fire authority ask you the question I have just asked you? How you would judge strong opposition? You're conducting this consultation, not them, which you made quite clear. Did they ask you the question at the meeting in which you presented this report? Rescue Authority accepted the recommendation of the so report. No one asked you, no one asked you, just to make it clear to everybody here, no one asked you what strong opposition would actually be. I cannot recall that question being asked. Why would they ask me that? They need to consider the report on the 2nd of February 2015. Not I